Ahoy there, all you freshwater fans! Welcome aboard the RMS Sea Wilson. I'm Jan Gurney, Chief Scientist for the Adventure Zone's Underwater Odyssey, and I'll be your guide today. I won't actually be going with you. I wish I could, because there's nothing I like better than riding around in an expensive tin can under 100 feet of ice-cold water. But don't worry, I'll be in complete control of the RMS Sea Wilson, and you should know that I'm pretty good at this. I once won a Quake 3 championship, so you'll be perfectly safe. I've never lost a crew. Well, not for long, anyway. So you're about to get a first-hand look at what's under all that water out there. We're all set in here. You ready in there? Is that a Roger? Great! Okay, your first stop, the docking bay, where your passenger pod will hook up with the primary propulsion module. Docking bay, are you ready? Roger, we're go. Okay, folks, deep breath, heads up, eyes open, stay focused, hold on tight, grab your socks, and relax. You're on your way. Five Great Lakes. They stretch 1,600 miles, creating a natural border between Canada and the United States. Add the Five Great Lakes together, and you have the largest body of fresh water in the world. The RMSC Wilson is docked. Thank you, Bob. I'm now initiating launch sequence. Whoa, hold up there, Chief Scientist Jan. Don't fire up this puppy yet. Problem, Bob? Oh, there are no problems, Jan. Just challenges and opportunities. Unless you consider a massively destabilized gyro that could send a whole kit and caboodle on a nosedive into the bottom muck a problem. Sorry for the delay, folks. Uh, by the way, we're talking to Master Technician Bob Barstow, and he's in charge of... How you doing, folks? I'm just going to look under the hood here. Uh, Jan, you don't happen to have a 3 8 Phillips head on you, do you? How about anybody on board there? You got a 3 8 Whoa! Jan, did you do that? Tell me you didn't do that! Folks, I think we've jumped ahead to the launch sequence. So I guess, uh, prepare for immediate launch. Prepare for immediate launch! Hate this part. Hate this part. Hate this part. Bob, I'd like you to assure the passengers that you're okay. Oh yeah, I'm having a great time. And everything is fine with the descent vehicle. Everything is just peachy. I can get the door slip you on your stupid door. Man, that water is cold. The bubbles feel okay though. Ladies, gentlemen, children of all ages, welcome to Lake Ontario. Directly ahead, one of the hundreds of shipwrecks that dot the bottom of the lake. You can see Scuba Doo, our ROV. Remotely operated vehicle. Giving us some great pictures of the Scourge, which has been resting on the bottom since the War of 1812. The War of 1812? When was that, Chan? Hmm? There are quite a few wooden warships down here. Whoa, check out those cannons. Shipwrecks in the ocean are often destroyed by wood-eating shipworms. But shipworms are saltwater animals, so there aren't any in Lake Ontario, which is all freshwater. And the water is very cold. That's why these ships are in such great shape. It's sort of an ice water museum, isn't it? That's a good way to put it, Bob. Okay, we're ready to launch the drifting weather buoy. Is that what I've been sitting on? Ah, well, that explains the strange temperature readings I've been picking up. And now, please step away from the buoy. Three, two, one. This buoy will help meteorologists keep an eye on Lake Ontario, which is a big impact on our weather. It's the main reason we get a lot of the snow we're famous for. In fact, we're in the snowiest populated area this side of the Rockies. Hello, what's that? A straight-shelled cephalopod. I thought so. It's looking right at me. It's only a fossil, Bob, but they were giants up to 12 feet long, early relatives of the squid. Calamari giganticus! These fossils are 450 million years old, but Lake Ontario is only about 10,000 years old. So these cephalopods couldn't have lived on the bottom of the lake. 
How did they get here? Before my time, Jan. The fossils are here because glaciers scraped down from the north, dug out tons of rock, exposed these fossils, and created Lake Ontario. Jan, remember how I always say there are no problems, only opportunities? Yes, Bob, and it's frankly uh, quite annoying. Fine, but from where I sit, it looks like we're doing about 35 knots for a major opportunity. What? <laughs> Bob? Oh yeah, we're fine. It's going straight up this time. Jen, any chance you have a map that's less than 10,000 years old? Because we're not supposed to be in this abandoned tunnel. taught us a little bit about archaeology, geology, and how Lake Ontario affects our weather. I learned that shipworms like salt on their shipwrecks. You can see how important Lake Ontario has been for everyone who's lived here for the last 10,000 years, including us. Whoops! One last thing I'd like you to take away from your underwater voyage. Lake Ontario is part of a very fragile ecosystem, sensitive to runoff of farm chemicals and waste from cities and industries. That's why we have to do our best to keep it clean for another 10,000 years, at least. Here you are, safe and sound. On behalf of the entire crew of the RMSC Wilson, thanks for joining us, and we hope you enjoy the rest of your visit.